How did you feel about when you found out that Alan Hughes was going to be over the Tupac documentary after the you know police report and the incident that happened between Tupac and himself? To huge brothers, you know what I mean. Um, as you mentioned, they just did the Tupac documentary. I think um, I, it, what happened happened. I knew it was going to happen that way. You know, most people in the music industry, unfortunately, or entertainment business, they're not genuine people. They're all about money. You know what I mean? So here's, here's two people that, unfortunately, Pac didn't get along with them. They didn't like Pac. They wasn't business partners. Um, but somehow they convinced Tupac mother to allow them to do the film, the, the documentary. They get all of this money. And then they go later and do an interview. And what did he say? Tupac was an actor. He was a fake individual. Mm -hmm. After Delusional. You, yep. He told Tupac delusional. After you just shot a documentary on him, you just, you know what I mean, profit um, financially off of him. And you still don't have nothing good to say. So unfortunately, this shows the characteristics of these people. You know what I mean? Because even if you mm -hmm. thought that, if that was your opinion, because everybody have a right to their opinion. You understand? If that's what he think. But because you sat down with Tupac mother and she gave you rights to do this film, you should have kept that to yourself if you had some type of, you know, good manners or some honor. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. this is the entertainment business, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, do you have any uh, favorite stories or good memories um, that you could share with um, Johnny J? Johnny J, man. Johnny J, definitely he was a legendary, um, you know, producer. A lot of people don't know, right before I left the music industry, I did a whole album with Johnny J. You know, I was the, you know, I get a call one day with Johnny J. It was like, move out of all the outlaws, you're the only one who I want to record with. And we did a whole album together. And it was pretty much like my last music that I ever recorded. Um, I did a whole album with no cuss words. You know what I mean? The first time I was able to do an album without cuss words. He was just a hard worker. I think Johnny J don't get a lot of props. You know, he was a hard worker. He was a family man. He was a good dude. Down, you know, he was just a genuine good dude. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Um, at the end of the day, um, you know, when I became Muslim, I wanted to walk away from the music industry, and he was a, he allowed me to walk out of my contract. He was like, "Look, I don't want a penny back. If this is what you want, get out of your contract and go do what you want to do." So I have nothing but good memories of Johnny J. Okay. One second, um, John. That, One second. Yeah. Huh? Q? Okay. Yeah, the best writing I ever did. Ever did. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> Q just said that he wanted to remind the people it was the best that I ever did. The best. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Oddly enough, it's out now. I think his wife put it out. Yeah, I think his wife put, put it out. Does they have a right to put it out? It's theirs. You know what I mean? So, and I always made that clear to his wife. I said, look, even though I become Muslim, I walked away. It doesn't mean that the life that I had before as far as business transactions is null and void. You know, it doesn't work that way. So you have a right to put it out. You spent money, this is your right. So she put it out, you know? So obviously Noble always stated that uh, he was going to do a deal with Quest and Tupac um, mm -hmm. later on. And then, you know, obviously at the museum, there was, uh, you know, track list written up for the Machiavelli album. And it did say, you know, coming soon, the Outlaws album, Young Noble album, um, etc. What are, you, what are your thoughts on why um, he would have gone with Quest for Young Noble as opposed to just straight uh, Machiavelli Records? I'm not sure. I think because Quest Records back in the day was ran by Quincy Jones, correct? Mm -hmm. I yep. believe so. And I think because maybe, the, you know, Pac was engaged with Kadada, you know, um, um, and maybe just out of you know, he just probably wanted to spread some love, you know, help. Because, you know, Pac was that type of person. He always helped. He's helpful. So maybe I don't think Quest Records was really, you know, doing big things back in the day. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think he felt like the talent of young Noble would fit more into Quest. You know, Noble has always been, like, very lyrical, lyricist and stuff like that. So I think Pac probably just look at it from, you know, he would be good over on that side, you know. They might have had some artists already with similar, like, rap style as um, young Noble. But I, I definitely gotcha. remember he was going to do a Young Noble solo album. Okay. And then later on, Noble became part of the Outlaws. A lot of people don't know he was uh, he wasn't original. And then later, he just he just fit he just fitted in so so natural that Pop made him one of the Outlaws. You know. Okay. And that's what I wanted to get into. Like when, as far as the timetable goes, when did he? 
come around? Was it after All Eyes on Me? Because I don't think he was on that album. He definitely came. It was definitely after All Eyes on Me. See, Young Noble okay. is from Young Noble is from Gaddafi and Fatal Hood. They, they from Montclair. Mm -hmm. You know, they from mm -hmm. a neighborhood in Montclair. Young Noble moved to California. Even though he was born in Cali, he moved to Jersey. Then he went back to California. You know what I mean? Um, and what happened is when Fatal came back to Cali with us, him and Noble and Gaddafi, they, he just used to come around the crib. And I don't think none of us knew he rapped until one day he just started rapping. And Pac was like, man, get in there and spit something. 